Guess what? What is it? There's a bunch of empty cans up here. Same as before? Yep. These fucking kids. Why do you think they'd be up here? The hell if I know, but they better have stayed away from our communication stuff. Hey, Chris again. And Sean. Hey, if you saw the second trailer for Firewatch, there's a moment that takes place here uh, where Delilah points out that there's someone in Henry's tower. Henry points out that he's not there. Camera swings back to the tower, and it's a dr big dramatic ending. Of course, that moment happens in a completely different part of the map in the actual game and has totally unrelated to this moment that you're now experiencing. And this was a trailer that we had debuted um, with Sony at E3. So we knew we had a big audience and that a lot of people were going to see it. It's really, really challenging. I mean, you all know, because everyone goes to movies, what it's like to watch a trailer for a movie that you're excited about and maybe have already decided to see and then be shown too much stuff. Yeah. And every once in a while, a movie either has like the ability to or sort of the chutzpah to just show you a scene that isn't that hit the cutting room floor mm -hmm. or an alternate version of something that gets you feeling the way you should feel and excited for the movie as presented but doesn't spoil it for you and i think that's i'm really happy that we ended up doing that i think it's good like you're not lying it's not like we showed you a mechanic that you can't do or anything like that i think that we basically had to find a way to accurately convey the, t the type of tension and mood of the game without spoiling it. And so we basically ended up just writing those trailers to fit. I think, I think it worked. Yeah. I'm happy with it. But I am gonna need a raise. <sighs> Don't hold your breath. I'd start by hiking back towards your tower and just keep an eye out for anything that would lead you to them. Well, they're big into Red Eagle. <laughs> Great. See if you can find the path they took down from there. Maybe they looped back around towards the lake or something. I doubt they're where they were yesterday, but they obviously can't have gone far. I've got an overgrown trail here. Yeah, that'll happen. So I'm screwed when it comes to getting past it? Mm-hmm. Screwed until you clear it yourself, yeah. Great. Well, if I come across some tools, I'll add groundskeeping to my ever-increasing list of responsibilities.
Hey, I'm out at a ravine. What's this thing that spans across it? That is how you get to my sector. No kidding. Well, let me hike over. Well, it's locked up and mainly for emergencies. I've never actually used it. Rangers use it from time to time, but that's it. Help! Oh, God, it's an emergency! Oh, really? Yeah, I got, I got, um, I got eyes on a tornado! I gotta get out of here! A tornado in the heart of the Rockies? Yes! Holy moly, I need to call this in! Tom, Two Forks sees a tornado! He says he needs an evac into my sector. It's a meteorological impossibility? There haven't been tornadoes in the greater Yellowstone region in a hundred million years? You're gonna need him to stay and take a detailed personal account even if it means giving his life? Okay, I'll tell him. Sorry, Hank. No dice. Man. Hi, uh, it's Ben. Oh, it's Jake. Hey, Ben. So let's talk about Henry's camera. Or, I guess, um, more specifically, the Goodwin family camera. We liked the idea of Brian and his dad bringing one of those little cardboard cameras out with them. And we thought at, at various points in production, maybe we should cut taking photos because it's really complicated. Maybe we, you should just uh, just see the ones at the end in the credits and be, and be shocked by the Goodwin family. When I joined the project, I actually was super excited about this feature. Uh, I liked the idea of having the camera have a little bit of a real world like feel to it. Uh, people seem to like when you showed an animated GIF of it on Twitter. People went crazy like remembering these things. Especially once the idea was proposed that on PC you could print out your photos or you could upload them to the internet and get them developed, which is the thing that, that we do. Yeah, the um, photos that we take are actually secretly five megapixel, like, first generation digital camera quality photos, but just good enough that if you print them out, they look okay. Yeah, like once we went all in on that as a concept, it seemed like having the camera in the game was like an essential no-brainer and then we went all in on uh, making it work like a real camera like we really wanted you'll have a fixed number of shots you can take every time you take a picture Henry has to wind the camera by hand and some players like ignore it and don't take pictures they'll take like the two that Delilah tells you to and then the end credits will play and they'll see two pictures and maybe have a little feeling of loss that they didn't participate in that feature yeah or people who get super bummed because they get really into the mystery and take pictures of like strange machines and ripped up campsites and uh, a dead Brian Goodwin and then get to the end credit sequence and go, oh, that was me. Yeah, they only see the sad things. I like people that win. depending on how much you use the camera and what, what you choose to take a picture of, you end up getting a different story at the end of the game. That's the thing that I think worked out the best with the camera and made me the happiest that we actually went all, uh, all out on building this stupid thing. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, fun with that camera. Try not to snap anything that would scar a Photodome employee. I don't know, I got a lot of hiking to do. Might get bored. Well, I'm bored as rocks, so I'll keep you company while you find those girls, huh? Uh, someone found a fossil and put it in a cash box. Could be the same person who left that antler. And maybe they're leaving me an entire creature, piece by piece. Hey, sorry about snapping at you earlier. Um... I thought about it, and yeah, I suppose that must have sounded kind of weird when you heard me take that other call. 
Plus, you're just out here in your own head. <sighs> Trust me, I know how it is. So, did you break any hearts back in Colorado when you took this job? I myself have chosen to never get attached to anyone who would miss me, but <laughs> I know I'm a bit of an outlier. I'm actually married. But you're here. She's sick, and I shouldn't be here, but I am. I... I'm sorry, Henry. What is it? We'll get into it. Okay. Well, in the meantime, you are here, and it's beautiful, and escaping isn't always something bad. Yeah, sure. Look, I gotta go do a thing, but I'll have a radio. Okay, call me if you need to. Hey, uh, Delilah? What do you got? You found him? Uh, no, not yet. Why would there be a fence out here? Uh, because sometimes hikers go ass over tea kettle when on a trail. So the Forest Service would put up a big chain-link fence? A chain-link fence? Yeah. It looks like it surrounds a huge area. Huh. That's weird. Do you think those girls could be behind this fence? Hmm, well... Having once been an ornery young woman, the last thing I would do is climb a fence. Especially if I knew I was in trouble. I, I don't even know how I would get in. It's really strange that that's out there, by the way. Yeah, it's weird. Hey, Chris here. And Patrick. Hey, Patrick. So, at this point in the game, we're starting off on the search for the teens. One big challenge we frequently had on Firewatch uh, was figuring out how to guide players when the person giving you your current objective doesn't actually know where to send you. Delilah knows you need to find the teens, but neither of you have any idea where to start. And in this case, we'd used telephone poles to get you up to Bear Tooth Point, and uh, we're now using some beer cans to sort of lead you in the general direction away from that. Uh, of course, we rapidly uh, saw that these teens were drinking a truly <laughs> ludicrous <laughs> number yeah, of, of beers in yep. one walk. I think you and I both placed quite a few of these bear cans, probably you even more than I. Yep. Um, it started to sort of strain credulity. Right, right, which is why I think we had to add that case at the end just to make it plausible yeah, that there are something like 30 cans out there. <laughs> right, yeah. Probably the best tool we ended up coming up with for this, which was the smoke plume. Right was because we were getting increasingly... Oh, hey, this is Ben again, and I'm here with Paolo. Hello, I'm Paolo. I was the graphics programmer on Firewatch. So we're here to talk a little bit about the time of day system that the game uses and the skybox stuff. You're in an area where there's a weird device yeah. that you can use to step and mess around with those while we talk. As you can see around you right now, you can walk on the different parts there and you'll see the weather changing. So immediately uh, when we started working on Firewatch, there were a couple of important points. We had to have a dynamic time of day. So at any point, people could trigger changing the sky, changing the fog, changing each individual component independently. Um, at the same time, this has all sorts of technical implications, but the most important are, okay, how do we represent all this information? Uh, games have uh, many, many ways of uh, baking data, which means that uh, you sort of gather the lighting information in a scene and then you save it into uh, memory, which is usually a texture or other data structures, to uh, then use it in real time. Now, the problem with that was that uh, we had a lot of different permutations and we wanted them to change in real time. And also, we didn't know ahead of time how many we were going to have. So we tried to go uh, with a fully dynamic uh, solution. In this case, uh, what dynamic means is just that um, as you walk around, you'll see the sun moving around, the sky color changing, the fog color changing, and the shadows moving. So all those components are always rendered every frame and there's no information that is stored anywhere. So what pieces make up the sky again? The sky, we tried first an approach of representing sort of a simplified version of the scattering equation and seeing what that would look like. And it was looking good in the game, but it was still very difficult to author. And since Oli as an the art director is absolutely talented with colors, at some point we just sat down and we sort of worked together and said, okay, imagine that you could just paint the sky in Photoshop and think about how that would work in the game. It might just magically work. And by doing
using just a painted sky in Photoshop, and we created a shader, which are basically programs that run on the GPU to render things, that suited his exact style. So really, the sky is just a series of gradients that blend into each other with a couple of controls to uh, change curves and attenuations between them. So as you, you walk around, you'll be able to see how both the sky changes and then the fog adapts to the same color and the sun moves in the right direction. And then there were just a couple of uh, numbers to make sure that like the brightness around the sun would be higher so that it would still sort of represent and give the feeling of what the sky and how the sky behaves. And this uh, this like gave Ollie the ability to test some things very quickly. Exactly. Having immediate feedback for filling a world that was as big as Firewatch, especially for the uh, sort of limited uh, team size that we had, was absolutely important. Like we had to have a way so that artists would make something quickly, have an idea of what it would look in the game, and knowing that it was pretty close to what we were going to ship. Yep. I think so, that thin plume of smoke. Yeah, looks like it's way down to the southwest. You should be able to find a way over there from the meadow by the lake. Towards Five Mile Creek, it's in the southwest quadrant of your map. You think it's those girls? I'm pretty sure it's a campfire, so yeah, I'd call that a safe bet. Man, they really do not give a shit, do they? <sighs> not a one. So, how'd you meet? Met in a bar. Mmm, the birthplace of modern romance. I walked over and asked her what her major was because I thought she was a student, not a prof. Smooth. That's me. I did make the first move, though. Aw, you were brave. I was drunk.
Boy, for as dry as it is this summer, there's an area down here that's, uh, lush. Oh, you must be talking about the Aspen Grove down there. Yeah, I think that's where I am. Those trees are actually one root organism. Did you know that? Hi, this is, uh, Ben again, and I'm here with Paolo. Hello! We're gonna talk about stylistic fog and some of the other effects in the game. For the stylistic fog, we basically use the same approach that we use for um, the other rendering components and technologies of Firewatch, which was, how do we get something that allows Ollie and Jane to really just be directive and paint colors and information like they want into a 3D world? So the only challenge that was there really was, how do we translate sort of a, a 3D scene that has depth into it into layers of colors and immediately we came up with this technique of using a one-dimensional texture that is applied you can imagine uh, imagine that the image it's a um, it's a sort of a rectangular image goes from left to right imagine that left is the color that is closer to the player and right is the color that is in the distance so in that way you are basically able to paint color in the depth of the world and that really gave Jane and Ollie the control they needed to make the Firewatch colors as, as beautiful as they are. Yeah, it really matches a lot of Ollie's original like poster and previs work for the game. Yeah. And that technique is used a lot in like film. In film they wouldn't even just use one texture, sometimes they'll use like hundreds of these strips to, to layer out an entire scene. But can't do that in a video game because we got to render it a lot of frames per second on bad computers sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and uh, for that, like for the color correction specifically, we used the uh, the plugin that was actually available in the Unity Asset Store and it just worked right off the bat for us. It gave us sort of the real-time uh, tweaking that we needed and thanks to that, we saved some development time, which was really precious. Yeah, that was the uh, Amplify Color if you're really yeah, wanting right. to make your own Firewatch. And in an area like this Aspen Grove, you can see all those effects coming together. You see we have God rays coming from the sun, we have depth of field. Um, if you pick up an object to blur out the world, you can see all the different colors that Ollie's manipulating beyond just like what the sky and light would provide. Yeah, awesome. Uh, there's some cloth out here. It looks like it was torn from something. Strange. I'll keep looking around.
I see a campsite, and it looks like they've got a fire. Is it them? Oh, it seems like it. I swear, they must have dragged four cases of beer out here. Track them down, and don't let them see you. What a job this is. I have entered the teen zone. Oh, really? And where's that? It's the name of a magazine for girls. It's on the ground here at their camp. These girls have a full case of beer left here. A full case. Huh. Pants are back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pants are back? Well, I found some dangerous hunks. What on earth are you... Ah, found my sheets! So they did break into your tower. Looks like... The tent looks like it's been through the shredder. Which would explain that scrap I found. What could have done that? Like a, like a bear, or, um, I don't know, it sounds crazy, but even a bull elk if it's off its rocker. You know, maybe I should take one of their sleeping bags as payback. Uh, looks like someone left a note. Intriguing. Maybe you should read it. Okay, yeah. Let me know what it says. Oh, they're gone, for sure. Well, what's it say? to call the police because they think I attacked them. Oh my god, well, <laughs> did you? No, well, hey, I didn't do this, okay? Someone or something went to town here, but it wasn't me. Because I told you to scare them, not assault them. Yeah, I took their whiskey back at the lake, but that just felt like, I don't know, the cost of doing business. That's different, okay? And I don't blame you. This is... I don't know, weird as hell, but it wasn't me. It's it's okay, I believe you. Weird stuff happens in the woods. It could be other campers. They could be having a bad mushroom trip. We really don't know, but they're gone. There's no way to call the cops. They're not coming back, and we can get to work. I'd really like to start enjoying a quiet summer. Yeah, me too. <laughs>